بسم الله الحمد لله والصلاة والسلام على رسول الله وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين My brothers and sisters in Islam on the Quranic Reminders WhatsApp groups السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته Today's uh, Quranic reflection is going to be Ayah 185 from Surah Ali Imran Very famous ayah Allah Azza wa Jal He says كل نفس ذائقة الموت وإنما توفون أجوركم يوم القيامة فمن زحزح عن النار وأدخل الجنة فقد فاز وما الحياة الدنيا إلا متاع الغرور الله عز وجل began this آية with a reality, with a certain fact He said كل نفس ذائقة الموت Every soul shall taste death <coughs> What does this mean? كل نفس, نفس here means الروح So the soul of every single person will taste death there is something incredible in the word ذائقه. Allah Azza wa Jal did not say every soul will die. He said every soul shall taste death. And the meaning of this as Shaykh al-Islam ibn Taymiyyah rahimahullah said, he said that the ruh itself doesn't die. It tastes death. And that is when it's extracted from the body. When it comes out of the body, the soul will taste death. Otherwise, the soul never dies. And if the soul was to die, it would have never tasted death. For the soul itself does not die. It only tastes death when it comes out of the body. كل نفس ذائقة الموت Everyone. And everything. And the angels. And Malak al-Mawt himself will taste death. And only Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala does not die. Allah la ilaha illa hu al-hay al-qayyum. Allah azza wa jalli said, Kullu man alayha fan wa yabqa wajhu rabbika. Thul jalali wal ikram. And uh, what is beautiful as well in the word ذائقة is that taste could either be sweet, it could either be sour. And so death is a good and a sweet experience for the believer. And it is a bad, horrible, sour taste for the disbeliever. When Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, in a long hadith of Al-Bara' ibn Azib radiallahu anhu, mentioned what happens as the believer dies and what happens as the disbeliever dies. And he mentioned that the believer, as he dies, he is greeted by angels, biyudul wujuh, that are, their faces are white, their faces as though it's the sun, it's radiant, it's beaming with light, and they have uh, shrouds from the paradise, and they have perfume from the paradise, and they take the soul of the believer, and they wrap it around with the shroud, and they perfume his soul, and it is all good in good. Hatta Malak al Mawt, when he takes the soul of the believer, he says, Ayyatuhan nafsu tayyibah. He's speaking to the soul. Oh, pure, good soul, come out. Come out to a forgiveness of your Lord and come out to the pleasure of your Lord. And then in Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he says that the soul of the believer, it comes out just like water drips out from a container or from a bottle. You see how smooth and simple water is flowing out of a bottle? That's how the soul of the believer is extracted and it's removed from his body. And as for the disbeliever, angels, black-faced, will approach them and they will have with them al-masuh, which is rough clothing, rough shrouds, and they will rip out this soul. Yani, Malak al-Mawt would say to the kafir, Ayyatuhan nafsu al-khabitha, ukhruji ila sakhatim min Allahi wa ghadab. O evil, horrible soul, come out to the displeasure and the anger of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And the soul would rush back into the body, doesn't want to come out. So then the Malak al-Mawt will rip it out. فَيَنْزَعُهَا كَمَا يَنْتَزِعُ السَّفُودُ مِنَ الصُّوفِ الْمَبْلُونَ He rips it out, just like steel. Steel is ripped out from wool. Yani there is there is pain in this. There is suffering in this. We ask Allah Azza wa to protect us. Now, Allah Azza wa said, كُلُّ نَفْسِ ذَائِقَةُ الْمَوْتِ Every soul shall taste death. For the more goodness you have in this life, the more commitment you have upon La ilaha illallah, the better the experience of death. 
it becomes a sweet experience, a sweet taste, something you look forward to. And a person that is a disbeliever, a corrupt person, a sinner, the one that doesn't repent from his sins, going down the pathway of Jahannam, he'll have a horrible experience as the soul is being removed from his body. Allah Azza wa Jal then he said, وَإِنَّمَا تُوَفَّوْنَ أُجُورَكُمْ يَوْمَ الْقِيَامَةِ And you will be rewarded in full or punished in full for your deeds on the day of judgment. And Allah Azza wa Jal is teaching us that the full reward for our good deeds will be given to us on the day of judgment. And what this means is that don't wait and sit for the rewards of your deeds now in this worldly life. Allah Azza wa Jal could give you some reward in this life and could give you some reward for your good deeds in the, in the grave. But the complete and full reward for your good deeds will be given to you on the day of judgment. Because on that day, it's only the day of accountability. The believers are paid in full for their good deeds. And the sinners and the rebellious and the disbelievers will also be paid in full on that day as well. And so this also means that when a person commits a sin, he could be punished for this sin in this life or in his grave. But the complete punishment for the sin, if Allah hasn't accepted the tawbah of this person, will be on the day of judgment. Allah then he says, Allah he mentions the definition of what success is. He says, whoever is moved from the fire, زحزحة, meaning to be moved, like a little tiny movement, whoever is moved and removed from the hellfire, يعني الله أكبر, as though, as though us and our deeds and our sins and our transgression and everything we have done, done wrong was about to lead us to the fire. But it was Rahmatullah subhanahu wa ta'ala that came and it moved us a little and it saved us from the fire. فَمَنْ زُحْزِحَ عَنِ النَّارِ Anyone who is saved from the fire وَأُدْخِلَ الْجَنَّةِ And enters the paradise فَقَدْ فَاز Indeed, he has been successful. He has earned success. This is how Allah defines success. My brothers and sisters in Islam, do not be deceived. Do not be deceived by today's definition of success. The West has done a good job in, in uh, يعني, heck, ruining the minds and brainwashing the Muslims in what success is. People believe success is this dream that the Western world has sold to the people. Buy a house and own a house and go and take a loan from, uh, from the bank and fall into a riba. This is not success. Wallah, it's not success to own a house. And have a nice car and have a swimming pool in your backyard and whatever it is that people are uh, uh, have immersed themselves into thinking this is the luxury and this is the success La. Allah Azza wa Jal teaches us that the success is to be removed from the fire and entered into the paradise this is success and how do we do so there's a beautiful hadith and Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam tells us that there are certain things if a person was to do during his day, then that day of his, he would have removed himself from the fire. And Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he says that every man, that every person from Bani Adam was created and he has 360 mafsal, meaning he has 360 bones in his body. So then the Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam says, Anyone who says Allahu Akbar and Alhamdulillah and La ilaha illallah and Subhanallah wa astaghfirullah, he says astaghfirullah wa azala hajaran anit tariq and removed a rock from the people's path. Yani he removed harm from the people's path or a thorn from the people's path or a bone from the people's path wa amara bi ma'roof or encouraged the people to do good, reminded his family to pray, reminded them to give a charity. He commanded the people to good. And he, 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 he forbid the evil. He told the people, be careful, watch out, don't fall into sin, avoid this sin, avoid that sin. And he did all these good deeds in the number of the joints he has. So 360. 
Say you did Allahu Akbar or subhanallah alhamdulillah ilaha illallah astaghfirullah and you enjoined good and you forbid evil and all of this in one day equal to 360 times and Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam says فَإِنَّهُ يَمْشِي يَوْمَئِذٍ وَقَدْ زَحْ زَحْ نَفْسَهُ عَنِ النَّارِ He will walk that day having removed himself from the fire having saved himself from the fire Walhamdulillah every single day try to achieve this kind of list these kind of good deeds, 360 of these a day, and you have removed yourself from the fire. Finally, Allah Azza wa concludes the ayah by saying, وَمَا الْحَيَاةُ الدُّنْيَا إِلَّا مَتَاعُ الْغُرُورِ He reminds us of a reality for why the majority of people will fail on the day of judgment. He says, and verily this worldly life is nothing but a mata' an enjoyment, al-ghurur, deception, a deceptive enjoyment, an enjoyment that deceives you. This is what the worldly life is. Allahu Akbar. When Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he says, مَوْضِعُ صَوْتٍ مِنَ الْجَنَّةِ خَيْرٌ مِنَ الدُّنْيَا وَمَا فِيهَا That just the, the size of a whip, you know, the size of a whip, if you own that in the paradise or that small space in the paradise is better than this worldly life and everything that is in it. فَالدُّنْيَا is مَتَاعُ الْغُرُورِ It's an enjoyment and it's a deception. Yeah, and look at this. I give you an example. You purchase clothing now and you're so excited and happy about some new clothing that you have. Four or five months down the track, it wears away. You throw it in the bin. Had an enjoyment and then it was thrown in the bin months later. That's a deception. You're deceived. You earn money today. You work hard for it. You work hard. You miss your salawat and whatever it is that people are doing of the sins and neglecting of the obligations. You earn this money. And as a result, you spend it during the week. It's all gone. You don't feel it. What's that? It was an enjoyment, but it was a deception because you earned it and it's gone now. You eat today, you drink today, the best of food, the finest of the foods. And then two, three hours later, it goes away. This is a deception. Yesterday, we had friends with us. You had your family with you. You were laughing, you were talking, you were enjoying time chatting. Now they're dead. They're in the grave. You cannot talk and enjoy this anymore with them. It's a deception. This enjoyment wasn't here to last for long. It went. Every single day we have an example of how this worldly life is a deception. Subhanallah. For this ayah, this ayah, my brothers and sisters in Islam, its purpose is to detach us from this worldly life and not attach ourselves to this worldly life. And to understand that if we're all going to taste death and success is in the paradise, then make that your worry. Make that your concern. How are you going to build your afterlife? How are you going to remove yourself from the fire? And how are you going to enter this paradise by the mercy of Allah Azza wa Jal? With shaitan, a shaitan is the one that is playing around with us. And he wants us to fall into the traps and temptations of this worldly life. Allahu Akbar. And this is why some of the Salaf would say, حب الدنيا رأس كل خطيئة That the love of this worldly life, desiring this worldly life, is... The head of every sin is the main reason for every sin. Why do people fall into interest? Because they love this life. Why do people do zina? Because they love this worldly life. Why do people commit whatever it is they commit of the sins? And they leave out the obligations. Why? Because they love this worldly life. Why does a person neglect his prayers? Because he loved this life. He couldn't dedicate half an hour, an hour of his time for Allah. He doesn't have concern in the afterlife. Ma'ath Allah. My brothers and sisters in Islam, this is a shaitan. If he cannot make us fall into kufr, he wants us to fall into the major sins. If not, he wants us to fall into the minor sins. If not, heck, he wants us to attach ourselves to this worldly life until we fall into this trap and the road of success is gone upon us and we lose it all. We lose in this life and in the afterlife. Allah, we ask Allah to protect us. We ask Allah to show us the way to the paradise. And to grant us success to the way of the paradise. Inna huwa liyudhalika wa qadiru alayhi wa sallallahu wa sallam wa baraka ala nabiyyina Muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi ajma'in.